So I think enough, enough of my, my um, life in music, as it were. I just thought I'd uh, bring a few guitars. As Mary says, I have quite a few. And tell them how many. I think, I think I've got 28. <laughs> but I'm a bit vague. Because do you count something like that as a guitar? I don't know. So anyway, um, yes, a bass guitar, four strings, and it, it, it's the exciting one of any band because it makes people dance, that's what I think anyway. Mustang Sally. Uh, it, it's kind of uh, a bit like the cello in an orchestra, really. Double bass. Uh, I actually have uh, five bass guitars, because you do, don't you? Um, the most um, interesting one, I think, is this, which again, like a cello, doesn't have uh, the, the, the lines that, that have across the fret all it's just, uh, so, and um, people say to me, um, how do you know where to put your fingers? Well, actually, there's a little cheat on this one. It has red LED lights to tell me where to put your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sometimes on a very light stage and can't see this. I'm terrified. <laughs> so yeah, that's just our secret. <laughs> And then uh, this, this thing that is uh, obviously a double bass. Um, it looks very modern. And, uh, and it is, I, I got this in uh, about the year 2000. But it's actually a, re a remake of a, of a bass that um, a German company called Framus made uh, in 1956. And the 1956 version of this is virtually identical to this and I love this to bits because it's just a wonderful sound. I wish I could plug everything in but, um, but it's just not uh, practical. Uh, this one, I thought I'd uh, bring this one down to show you because <coughs> this was actually the very first production electric guitar. It's, it's called an ES-150 and uh, it's made by Gibson, a great guitar maker of, of America. Uh, they've been making guitars uh, since the 1880s I think. But this um, st started in production in 1936. Uh, they were produced until 1940. Uh, this one is actually a 1941. Um, <coughs> the reason I know that is because the um, the specification for for this guitar was that it had a flat back, and, and uh, um, you can't really see it perhaps from a distance. There's a bit of the bulge there, and there's also a bit of the bulge there. I don't know if you can see it in the reflection. Now when I bought this, I was always a bit dubious about whether it was actually a proper name, uh, ES-150 or not, because of this carved back. But I contacted uh, um, somebody in, uh, who knows a lot about Gibson guitars in, uh, uh, in America, and uh, he said, uh, oh yes, it's a proper one. It was made in 1940, when, when the thing was coming to an end, and they were just putting guitars together from anything that was lying about, really, any parts that, that were lying about. And this was a kind of transition to the next, the next version. And this chap says, um, uh, I know of six of these in existence, and yours is the seventh. So, pretty rare thing. Um, they were called um, ES. 150s because um, 
They were the first production uh, electric Spanish guitar, electric Spanish DS. Yes. Um, and they were called 150 because for $150 you could buy this and an amplifier and the cable to go in between. Uh, $150 in 1936 equated to about uh, £3,500 now. It's a lot of money. And one of the, the features of this is that it has this, uh, this pickup which is called, it's known as the Charlie Christian pickup because uh, a very famous uh, jazz guitar is called Charlie Christian in the 1940s. I used to use this guitar. Uh, so this, this is one of, one of many pride and joys. Um, so yeah, that's the oldest guitar that I have actually. This one is um, an electric Spanish ES-225, kind of really um, launched as a student model guitar, but quite expensive, you know, $225. Uh, they were produced from 1955 to 1959. And I bought this one because it's exactly as old as me. It was made in 1957, which I was too. And I imported this over from America. It's in absolutely pristine condition. It's um, superb. And uh, when I got the um, the guitar over, I was really sad. Well, it, it, to see that everything that was in it originally, when the guitar was supplied, was still in the case. The uh, the uh, the strap and the uh, the guitar lead and some spare strings. And I thought that was lovely. And just to prove that not all the guitars are the, the semi-acoustic electric Spanish ones, this is a Gibson solid guitar, uh, SG. This is a 1964 one. And again, it's in superb condition, and um, yeah, another another lovely thing. And um, as Mary says, I have about 28 of these things. And just finally, just uh, just a little few uh, notes, words about this thing. It's a very famous guitarist in the 1950s called Les Paul, who you may have heard of. He, um, he claimed to have invented the, the, the solid uh, body electric guitar. But it wasn't much of an invention because this thing, which is a, a slide guitar, you, you, you wear picks on your, on your fingers and, and um, Remember a song called uh, Sleepwalk by Santo and Johnny? Um, um, these things were around uh, from the mid 40s, um, which kind of proved that, uh, that, that guitars were possible. And all that Les Paul really did was make one of these in the shape of a guitar so that he could play it. I always uh, am amazed by the fact that people used to go touring with these things because th this is a lump of mahogany and it's really, really heavy. And people used to tour with them and the touring was mostly done on, on trains and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, there were tough people in the, in the 40s, I guess. I certainly wouldn't like to be touring with it now. Uh, but I think that uh, that kind of brings me to what I, uh, I wanted to tell you. Is, are there any questions? Does anybody want to any questions? Or... Yes? Have you still got your £19.50 bass guitar? Do you know, I haven't. And I kicked myself incessantly about it. It was dreadful. I couldn't wait to get rid of it. 
Um, I swapped it for a uh, for um, oh the the full time line was I swapped it for a Shaftesbury semi acoustic bass, which I don't have, and I would love that still. I swapped that for a, a Nibonez copy of a Rickenbacker guitar, bass guitar, and uh, I swapped that for a real Rickenbacker guitar, which I still have. And I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to get one of, them, one of them again. I can't find the Ibanez. The, the, just doesn't, the model that I had just doesn't seem to be available anywhere. It's probably a good idea because I'd probably have to pay a lot of money for it, to be honest. There are some Shaftesbury, Shaftesbury semi-acoustics that, that are about, which I might just kind of don't tell or die. I might, uh, I might buy one at some point. But... Um, I would still love the £19.50 one just to, to have the complete collection, to be honest. Yeah. Is that gig that you did? Yes. That did you get paid for it? No. It was actually, um, we were 15 years old and it was the end of summer and it was a, uh, a school friend's end of summer party, really. Um, so, 15 years old, there was far too much beer involved. <laughs> and uh, and it was probably over by about half past ten. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you have to sing with your band? Do no, I have to sing? Yeah. I, I sing backing vocals. I dis detest my voice. <clears throat> I uh, hate my singing voice. I actually sing in the choir. <laughs> I like in the choir. <laughs> That's a secret I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'll just finish off by, by kind of telling you a bit about, uh, about, about the COVID. Uh, uh, well, I'll go a bit, back a bit further than that. Five years ago, um, I, uh, I was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. It was diagnosed very early and I had a, a really kind of grueling operation that uh, they promised me um, I would, uh, it would take 12 months for me to, to recover from. And um, so when I was going into this, into the chemotherapy and, and the operation, I, I arranged for a uh, base place to take over my job in the two bands I'm in. And uh, after, after the operation, I was absolutely desperate to get back playing. In six months I was back doing half gigs again, um, which was great. But then of course, Covid struck. And um, I'm lucky to have quite, quite good recording equipment at home. And um, I do quite a lot of videos and stuff like that, uh, which is another of my interests. And because I'd had the cancer, I was one of the, the shielding people, so I was actually locked in my house with, with nobody coming in, nobody going out, for ten weeks. Well, it was great. I loved it because I could do loads of recording and make videos. And, uh, and um, do, do you correspond with everybody on, on, on email? or yes. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll just give, give Mary some examples of some videos that I've done which might just kind of round everything off. Because on some of the videos, I use all the Gibson guitars and, uh, and their instrumentals, which you'll recognise the tunes on, I'm sure. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a, a, a selection of videos that you might just want to... Um, yeah. So anyway, um, I seem to have gone a lot longer than five minutes. So uh, well done, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> To do so, uh, they do say that starting playing music, being involved with music at the age of seven is probably the optimum age. So I think you probably got it just about right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, many people think that I was also, or I'm also obsessed with music. Uh, certainly, I was 
uh, for a big part of my life, me brass bands. Oh, yeah. And uh, one of my early conductors said to me, if I said to all the players, in private conversation, if I said to all the players in the band, uh, the best thing you can do is join the church choir. He said they'd laugh at me. Um, about three years prior to that, I'd been forced into joining the church choir <laughs> because there was a wedding. <laughs> I was nine years old at the time, and they were clearly, clearly desperate. <laughs> and uh, so I, I got roped into this church choir church that I still go to today. If I remember rightly, I was paid a pound. I wish I'd saved those pounds now because Jerry seems to be taking one off me every single day. It'll come in useful, but never mind. Um, you're clearly a natural musician from what you've said uh, with the uh, uh, part that you wrote very early on. <coughs> And that's a gift. Um, and you're joining the first band. It sounds like you're in the right place at the right time. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it was meant to be, wasn't it? One yeah, it and was there's no way. escape as well. Uh, no. Well, there is actually. I, <laughs> I didn't find the way out eventually, but uh, <laughs> maybe possibly it is disappointing that the areas that you play in are. Uh, gradually going down, but that's a fact of life, isn't it? It's been interesting to hear how you started. It's been equally interesting to see and hear about the instruments that you've brought along with you tonight. A fantastic range of instruments, including at least one of your pride and joys. So, thank you very much for sharing your story with us this evening. And can ask my fellow members to show their appreciation in the usual.